Watching what was going on around my environment, I came up with a topic to look at, and that is how different religious groups have responded to COVID-19 in Nigeria, precisely. I'm looking at Christians and Muslims that have the largest populations in the country. So, and responses to COVID-19 varied across these religious um, groups. You know, when the government came up with um, restrictions, social distancing, using your face marks, you know, <laughs> they reacted to it. You know, they were to lock down. They were unwilling to observe the social distancing. Then the, Muslim, uh, the Christian community kind of followed the rules. So the point that churches were closed um, until about two weeks ago. So something like uh, Easter was not celebrated. All those um, religious rituals were well, we are not. Coming to the Muslim side, when it was time for Ramadan, they insisted that they must be congregating. In fact, there were um, protests across some parts of the country with even a police station uh, burnt down, you know, some destructions because they were being uh, asked to lock down. They were unwilling to accede to these instructions. But I saw it as an opportunity to study human behavior in the current dispensation. And um, not just even the opportunities for research, there's also a total life-changing process that came with the pandemic, you know? Previously, we, we live in a society where contact is very important. I mean, it's a normal way of um, greeting to hug somebody, you know, uh, make body contact, shake somebody. So the life-changing process is something unique that needed to be captured personally. I mean, if the pandemic eventually rolls away and if we forget about the pandemic, we may not remember those things that happened during this season. And as a historian, we track the past, you know? My profession tracks the past, so it was a good opportunity to look at these responses while they were happening and to ask people what informed their decisions. So that's basically what we are doing. Why did you respond the way you responded? Was it because of your religious teachings? Were there other things that informed your decisions, you know? So we are following all those things. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much to learn. It has changed a lot. The universities here and other sectors of the educational system have been locked down. The greater majority of institutions and uh, students and lecturers and teachers are at home. So that is a major change. It tells us something too. We have to think proactively. If we're going to have another challenge like this, how are we going to manage it with less losses? I mean, we have lost months. We have lost a lot in the academic calendar, you know? But all these months we've been at home, we can't just wish them away. It has encroached into people's lives, into people's um, plans for the future. So it helps us to think for the future, should this happen again, what should we do? We have to now start now to prepare and get ourselves ready so that when it happens, within a short time, we will transition you know, to um, an alternative uh, mode of doing things. I am in Nigeria. I can talk about the Nigerian situation. The other researcher is out there, like a member of my team is in the United States. Another one is in Kenya. The lived experiences of the three of us currently are not the same, you know? And then we, we, we exchange notes. I'm able to appraise better the challenges he's having there or the challenges she's having in Kenya, we can put that data together and we have a wider picture that will be more beneficial to a broader population. So that is an important aspect for research across borders at this material time. <music>
Thank you.